How Mamas Love Their Babies is a children's book that I wrote, and I would love to read a few pages of it for you. How do mamas love their babies? Well, mamas use their bodies in so many ways to care for their babies. Some mamas stay home all day long, and it's really hard work. Some mamas dance all night long in special shoes. It is also really hard work. <laughs> so I'll let you marinate in that slide for a second. Yes, that is a stripper mama protesting the labor conditions at the strip club where she works. She is a sex worker and a mother. Sex worker is an umbrella term used to describe people who labor in the sex industry. So you might be asking a lot of things, actually. Um, you might be wondering why it was important for me to have positive representations of sex working mothers in my children's book. Well, I'll start by saying that I have been a feminist my entire life, and initially, as a good feminist, I rallied against the sex industry. I thought that it was a site of male oppression. I believed that money operated as a form of coercion, and perhaps most tellingly, I thought that women in the sex industry lost their dignity. But then I got to thinking about this idea of dignity and its connection to our perceptions of good and bad womanhood, and also its connection to our perceptions of good and bad labor. By the way, this dichotomization of femininity into good and bad womanhood is referred to as the Madonna whore complex, or to use more colloquial language, the I want a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets complex. <laughs> So, as a scholar, it started to really fascinate me that a woman could be called a bad woman, and by extension, a bad mother, simply for engaging in labor that we perceive as bad. Essentially, there's this hierarchy of labor, wherein feminine bodily labor tends to fall to the bottom of that hierarchy, and masculine, heady, disembodied labor seems to always rise to the top of that hierarchy. I should know because I'm an academic and I am surrounded by academics and we never stop talking about how valuable our labor is. <laughs> <laughs> so in our culture, we have a lot of negative representations of feminine bodily labor. Sex workers, for example, are depicted in media often as just a headless pair of legs, seemingly walking themselves down dark alleyways. Sex working mothers are portrayed in more heinous ways. Sex working mothers are often depicted as neglectful of their children, necessarily broken, and in more cases than I can even mention, sex working mothers are depicted as deserving of violence whether that is the violence of police brutality, sexual violence, or the violence of losing their children. So these negative depictions of sex working mothers are not an accident. They're actually a tactic for keeping all women afraid of being perceived as bad. Now there's part of the story that I haven't yet told you. The first is that I am a mother. You probably gathered that from my desire to write a children's book or from the tired, dark circles under my eyes. <laughs> I am also a former sex worker. So after my phase of vehemently opposing the sex industry, I found myself in a strip club, and that's another conversation entirely, and one that we should have over cocktails. Um, but I ended up working in the sex industry for about 15 years. And then I became a mother, and something really interesting started to happen. My friends and peers and colleagues, even other people in the sex industry, started telling me to never talk about my former labor. They said that even talking about my former labor in the sex industry 
could lead to my losing custody of my child. These warnings were not unfounded. This is Gina. She is a woman of color, so she's already represented as the other in our society. These racist representations of black women juxtaposed with the stigmatizing representations of sex working mothers led to a court determining that Gina was an unfit parent. A court literally determined that this gorgeous baby was better off with no mother than with a sex working mother. This is Petite Jasmine. A court also ruled that she was an unfit parent by virtue of her labor alone. Her former partner and the father to her children was awarded sole custody despite the fact that he had a long track record of domestic abuse charges against him. In Jasmine's case, a violent man was deemed a better parent than a woman engaged in bad labor. But the really tragic ending to this story is that Jasmine's former partner ended up murdering her. So you see, these negative representations of sex working mothers and the taken for granted assumption that sex working mothers are bad mothers are detrimental. But they're not just detrimental for sex workers, and even if they were, you should still care. They're detrimental for all of us, and I'm going to tell you why. Have you ever heard the quote, well-behaved women rarely make history? Okay, some of you maybe even have it in bumper sticker form. <laughs> or if you listen to the artist MIA, you might have heard her belt out the very catchy lyrics, bad girls do it well, whatever it is. Okay, but what about this quote? One good girl is worth a thousand bitches. What do you think that means? Because I take it to mean that bad girls are disposable and good girls are deserving of love. Negative representations of sex working mothers, like I said, are a warning for all women. They're a warning to the bad girls, of course, but they're also a warning to the good girls. They say to good girls, choose. Choose between making history and being loved. But we don't have to make that choice anymore because once we start to dismantle this dichotomy of femininity, we can stop defining ourselves as one of two mutually exclusive things. But dismantling that dichotomy means supporting sex workers generally and demanding better representations of sex working mothers specifically. I create better representations of sex working mothers because I want all women, trans women, black and brown and indigenous women, migrant women, undocumented women, poor women, sick women, all of us, to be appreciated for our complexity rather than being forced to choose between two incomplete versions of femininity. You can also help dismantle this dichotomy simply by questioning the taken for granted assumption that a woman's labor or even her sexual behavior is indicative of her parenting at all. Heck, you could even stop using the word whore pejoratively, like right this second, and it would mean the world to women everywhere. Because truly, at the end of the day, whether we stay home or dance in special shoes, we love our babies. And our babies deserve positive representations of us. Thank you.